So I'm working on an MDF panel here. This is a 16 by 24. And I'm just bringing in my, my, my kind of uh, sky, I suppose you could say. Um, and I'm keeping this kind of, kind of soft, kind of loose. Um, what I'm doing is I'll be, I'll be using my airbrush to uh, really bring in some mist and soften this. So for now, I'm just laying in the basic shapes of these trees. And I'm not so concerned about exactly how dark. I want to make them kind of a mid-tone dark because I will be coming back and lightening them up with, with an airbrush. So, um, so it's really not too much of a concern. Right now, I just need to get the basic shape and outline of these tree lines. Um, bring in these leaves, open up the canopy a little bit as you see me do here, and, um, and kind of get this all staged. Now I'm coming back and just adding some really basic highlights uh, using um, just using some some sap green, little white, little yellow, um, and then just bringing in some basic highlights with some yellow green. So here I come back with my airbrush, and this is again where I where you want to make it dark enough that uh, it will show through obviously being in the background it's going to be a little a little bit of a different um, value so um, so that's kind of something to keep in mind now i'm coming back now again um, bringing in a little bit more detail uh, bringing in some individual le leafing um, and this does take a little bit of time, of course, but you have a lot of control doing it this way. So I'm using a very small 20 over zero uh, round brush to accomplish this. And I use this tiny brush quite a bit throughout the painting, but now just uh, looking to bring in some, some basic uh, flowers on the trees. And then coming back again with some more airbrushing just to kind of uh, get it all uniform. So I've sketched in this basic uh, country manner or English manner, um, which is kind of what I wanted to do here. Uh, I'm using Indian yellow with a little purple uh, to get that kind of that darker uh, goldish color, which will be kind of the background on, um, or the shadowing of, of our house. Now just kind of work in this roof. Um, you'll see me here come back in a moment and uh, use my acrylic paint pen. Uh, I discovered this pen uh, actually not too long ago. Uh, I found this pen. Uh, they have several colors. It's, it, is, it is acrylic paint, but um, it's dispensed in a pen, so I can really make some fine details uh, as I bring in all the um, all the tiles on, on this roof. So I'll kind of play with that for a moment and um, we'll come back and, and work on that a little bit more. Uh, but we've got these dormer windows. And now of course I, I like to lay and I, I like to work in sections so um, I kind of take each section about 80 or 90 percent to completion. Um, that way I can kind of keep track of exactly my angles uh, and as you see what, what I did on the left was uh, once I've laid in my underpainting to the building um, I'll come back with my charcoal pencil and re-outline some of my some of my shapes in the uh, in the house. So so I'm, I'm now working on these windows and I'm just kind of first kind of painting in the um, the soft underpainting on the lighting uh, because these windows will be lit up. Again, we're, we're looking at sort of an early evening uh, feel and so uh, you want to create a little bit of subtlety uh, throughout the painting because it, it will be a little bit dark in some areas. Um, but but those dark regions will certainly help your your highlights. 
uh, when you bring those in. It'll really help to embolden them quite a bit. So again, we're just going to be working in sections here. And uh, I'll use my, um, you'll see me use my, my little tree and texture brush quite a bit. I like to create a little bit of texture uh, throughout the painting, in the building, uh, create, keep some brush strokes. That's kind of important because it will create that, sort of that um, raw texture feel. And as I'm working on the ivy again, uh, I did use my, um, my tree and texture brush to accomplish that. This is my white acrylic paint pen. Um, so very handy as well. Uh, I was really excited that I could find that pen. It really um, makes the process much easier than trying to use a script liner brush um, and try to get those real delicate, fine lines and to keep them straight for that matter. So I'll be using that uh, those pens on and off quite a bit. Um, I've also used um, I've also used um, I'm trying to remember the, the name of the type of pen, um, but I've, I've used other other types uh, of pens in the past. Um, it does help me with those lines, but but I highly recommend using these acrylic paint pens. Pretty handy. All right, so we're, we're progressing now and in going into um, sort of the the next segment of this building. So just kind of laying it all in and um, trying to figure out where the shadowing was. Um, so definitely an interesting, fun painting. Uh, there's a lot of shadow. There's a lot of contrast that I was trying to create because it's early evening. The sun is beginning to set. Um, it will kind of play some interesting shadow casting throughout the building. And... Um, so some of this I'm just trying to add lib a little bit and figure out where I think the the shadows will sort of fall. Um, so it's definitely just kind of a process here. But again, um, for me, I think it's just easiest as I work in, in small segments and, and go fairly detailed nearly to completion throughout each one of those segments. So I can sort of keep track of where I am in the painting without really losing that that sketch, which can always be a challenge as well. Um, so working on these, you know, I'm right now I'm I am using acrylic paint. Um, I will take this about, I don't know, maybe 90% of the painting was done in acrylic. And I like that because honestly I can work much quicker. It dries so fast. It allows me to keep working on the painting and I don't have to wait long periods of times, days and weeks um, to, to get the painting to that level of completion. But um, it will, I will come back a bit later with oil paint and that's how I will finish up the painting. Um, so it's just kind of a method that I personally prefer. This obviously can be done all in oils, but um, you know, the technique is gonna be exactly the same, more or less the same. And um, for me, I could just kind of work that much quicker this way. So um, a lot of time was put into going into into this painting, um, so a lot of patience for sure. Um, and so, if you if you attempt to do this painting, uh, certainly a high, high level of uh, detail is going to be certainly required. But um, it's kind of what I like personally. So you'll see me go back and kind of tweak as I go. But, um, but again, for me, this, um, you know, this process, because there is so much detail, uh, 
you certainly could block in the entire painting all at one time, but uh, just not how I like to do it. So, all right, we're getting uh, closer to completing um, our, our home here, and then we can kind of start moving on, but um, we'll finish this out here. Um, again, I'm using um, Indian yellow for, and purple for my shadows for the highlight sections. Um, I'm, I'm using um, I'm using a yellow ochre. So um, I had to pull out my my paint and remind myself exactly what I was using. But yellow ochre and um, Indian yellow. All right. So now that we've got the building fairly complete here. I'm coming back and just starting to, to work into the tree line a little bit more. And I wanted to bring in this uh, forefront tree. Uh, it's going to be sort of a, a purplish colored tree there off to the right. But it's important to get these kind of laid in. They are still sort of background trees. And I'll be painting in um, some things in the foreground that will more or less cover a lot of that. So, so these are my shadows. Um, with my shadows, I really prefer to use purples. Um, again, I'm going back into the uh, yellow ochre uh, to create kind of the shadow that's playing on, on the side of the building. Uh, the tree is casting that shadow there. And then come back and sort of just lay in some basic leafing. Uh, here over our tree. When I come back with uh, oil paint, uh, I'll really be able to um, bring out a lot of the texture and detail uh, and refine that further. Right now this is sort of like, um, this is really more of an underpainting, honestly. Even though it's it's quite detailed, uh, I still consider it an underpainting. Um, I'm able to map out everything that I want, uh, where I want it to be located, get it all worked in. When I come back with my oil, oil paint later, I'll really be able to uh, apply thick paint that will sort of stand, stand off, kind of stand proud um, off the canvas a little bit and uh, create a little bit of dimension. So using my acrylic black pen, um, again, this, this can all be done with, with um, a rigger brush, a script liner brush, but uh, it just takes an enormous amount of time. And, and so, so I'm happy just to be able to use my pen and, and get that working. There's a lot of bricking there and a lot of detail. So kind of painting in our flower pots now that um, are kind of lining this uh, this railing here, or the, this fencing that we've got, um, but still using the ochres, the Indian yellows, uh, using the um, doxes and purples, and that's what's creating my lights and my shadows, just like in my building. We'll continue that that process uh, here going into these, uh, this fence and, and into the stairs as well. The feature for me was really bringing in the stairs and, and I really, as I had been contemplating this painting, um, I knew that I wanted to bring in stairs. So um, that's really gonna be the kind of the prominent feature here to this painting. So I'm laid in a lot of green here. This will be the underpainting for uh, all of our shrubbery. Um, and then I'm just dotting in some, some nice dark stippling with my tree and texture brush. I'm using, um, I'm using doxazine purple with some, with some uh, Van Dyke brown and getting that nice dark texture in here um, but it makes it 
uh, in my opinion, just a lot easier uh, as I'm trying to create this illusion with a lot of um, with a lot of leaves on these bushes. All right, so our light source is coming from the right, so we uh, you know need to keep in mind that um, as you bring in your highlights, exactly where that light source is coming from, and. Uh, I just want to sort of create some nice highlighted outlining uh, and separation in these bushes. And then I can bring in the flowers a little bit. And now that we've laid that all in, um, we can start to work on the stairs, which are kind of in the fore region of the painting here, and, and really push back uh, this flower bed. So we'll bring in these shadows here uh, using yellow ochre and um, using doxazine purple uh, for the, the main shadowing. In this painting, it's pretty important to not try to um, to not try to be it too loose uh, and free with with your strokes, you do need a little bit of control, um, and it will require a little bit of time. Um, so I'm stippling in a little bit more texture again, um, using my brown and purples, uh, right on top of the uh, ochre, so that we can sort of create, kind of give the illusion that um, this is concrete or stone, and um, and kind of give it that that rocky, stony texture. So I just really wanted to create just a nice, kind of fun um, scene here where the sun is really getting lower on the horizon. It's not, it's, it's pretty early evening, so it's just starting to set. Um, and we're just starting to see some shadowing uh, dancing across the, the landscape a little bit and uh, creating some really interesting um, light effects. So I'm really right now just playing with um, my lights and my darks and I'm trying to figure out where do I think the shadows are going to be. Um, and then, of course, I try to stipple that on exactly where I think those highlights are going to, are going to live. Now we've got, we've got sort of the uh, railing and um, there's some spacing in the railing um, that I had to um, think about as I'm bringing in, in these lights. And a lot of this was ad lib, so um, I could be absolutely wrong about exactly how the light's going to be cast. But in my mind, um, I felt like it looked a little bit like this. We're going to still see some shadow from the background railing cast over the stairs, and, um, and that's sort of the vision that I saw on how that might just appear. Of course, in, in Mother Nature, it could be a whole lot different, but uh, since this is sort of my vision and my world, uh, this is kind of how I felt like it would look. But I felt that it was a fairly close approximation of, of what could be expected um, during this sort of early evening hour. So I'm bringing in this next foreground railing uh, very much like I did the uh, the one in the background and um, still trying to achieve that illusion that uh, there's some texture here and that this is stone and and um, and just see if we can we kind of work that in and, and give it that impression again this is kind of a prominent feature in the painting so um, it did take an enormous amount of time, but uh, one that I was fairly pleased with as I as I worked it in. And 
and keeping in mind that this is still just an underpainting in my opinion. Um, and, and we'll figure it all out. Now I'm, I'm bringing in sort of a hedge here. Uh, we've got a couple hedges that are nice and manicured. And um, so I'm using sort of a mid-tone uh, green value with my sap green and some, and some uh, ultramarine blue um, to create that kind of dark greenish shadowing. And then come back again with my yellow green and uh, create some highlights. And then, of course, we've we've got our our other flower bed over here. So I'm bringing in sort of the underpainting on the bushes, and then I'll stipple on again my my dark browns and purples, create that texture, uh, the illusion that there's a lot of shadowing and, and leafing uh, all through that. Um, that flower bed region. I'm working in some ivy. Uh, I wanted the ivy to be kind of curling in and throughout the stairwell and on the banisters. Um, I just thought would kind of bring in a neat, a neat little effect. Bring all the um, the really dark underpainting in, and then and then come on top of that with where I thought I would probably see. Um, some of the highlights throughout that region there. So this section is going to be a little bit more in shadow than, than the other side of the flower bed. So uh, it's kind of tucked deeper uh, behind the uh, stairwell. And um, so I won't put quite as much highlight but just enough that it can create a little bit of division. Um, bring, thinking how the light would cast onto the bushes here uh, through the different railings. Um, and, uh, and so that's kind of what you're seeing me do here now. And then of course, bringing in our flowers. So I'm still using my small brush. I've used this small brush throughout much of the painting. It, it does take time. Um, but uh, I think certainly wor well worth it if, if you're um, the type of artist that enjoys a lot of detail. And I, and I am, so, so I enjoy um, using these smaller brushes and I feel like I get a, a much larger level of control over exactly those brush strokes, um, over using larger brushes. All right, so we'll bring in our next hedge now. And... Um, using that mid-tone green and then I'll stipple on my my dark texture here and start to create the the bushy leafy effect and then we can just bring in some highlights now there's not a lot of highlights again on this side it's going to be a lot more in shadow uh, than the other side so just enough to kind of create some division and separation between uh, all the different um, shapes and features in the painting. This painting obviously took a lot of time and um, I can't quite show everything I'd like to show, but um, hopefully I was able to grab enough of the uh, of the painting experience to kind of demonstrate exactly what I was doing. All right, so we're gonna bring in some larger foreground trees here. Um, so kind of block it in and then bring in some of the leafing um, on the outside of the uh, canopy. It's, it's, uh, it's important um, just to, to, to really show that. So it doesn't look all blocky. And then I can just um, bring in sort of uh, some subtle leaf formations. Now this tree is going to be sort of in front of the sunset a little bit so I'm bringing in my airbrush and creating some some highlights and some softness and um, kind of make the illusion that that the sun's starting to kind of burn through the canopy. And that's most evident in this tree that I'm working on right now. This is a large overhanging tree. 
Um, so I'm using more of a, a silhouette here. This will be more of a dark silhouette um, because I really want to kind of show the halo of the lighting in the sun as it as it kind of burns through the canopy, but it's still tucked behind uh, this thick uh, tree, uh, these 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 tree boughs and, and, and all the sh the um, leaves uh, there in front. So I'll, I'll bring back in uh, my airbrush here in a moment and sort of open up the canopy and create some holes in it that uh, really look like it's burning through. But I think it brings on a really nice effect. And, um, and this is just kind of how I would like to do um, something of this nature where, where the sun is actually behind an object. And so now it kind of looks like the sun glow is kind of burning through and, and, I, and I thought that was kind of nice. I started working on this, this path and I didn't really like what I'd done so I decided to kind of go back over it again. I, I felt like it needed a little more texture so I brought in my tree and texture brush as you see me do and I wanted to stipple on um, those effects um, as if this is, um, this is porous stone and um, you're going to see a little bit more um, texture and pores uh, through that that uh, that little stone path and of course using my my dryer to kind of blow it off and and dry it off much quicker so I can keep working on it okay and then now I can sort of just bring in where I think those little flagstones are gonna are gonna kind of live uh, as you move closer to the foreground, those stones are going to broaden and widen um, a little bit more. So you got to keep that in mind uh, to get that illusion that it's it's sort of um, pushing back toward um, the painting and give that illusion of some of some depth and distance. So yeah, my second my second effort at improving this path I was I was much more pleased with it uh, than that the first one so I decided really not to show uh, what I had done on that on that first path just because I just simply wasn't satisfied so never be afraid to just change something if you don't like it uh, go in and, and uh, change it that's the beauty of uh, of working most things can be uh, can be fixed and that's that's a great thing about painting all right, so I'm um, bringing in my uh, rigor brush now and uh, just really looking at bringing in some separation in our in all of our uh, blades of grass. And I thought it'd be a nice touch to go ahead and add this this little um, wrought iron uh, bench. Um, and using because there's so much delicate detail uh, in it, it was it was really nice to have that acrylic pen um, to sort of figure out what that would look like. Now it's going to cast a bit of a shadow, so I'm kind of working on that shadow that's sort of getting cast onto uh, that hedge. I'm going back with my white acrylic pen and, um, and just working in some of those details. Now I'm starting to um, add the oil paint now. Um, as you see what I'm, my little uh, note there, but uh, this is all now coming back in oil paint. And I'm really applying this very thick. Uh, that's really an important key to uh, when I bring back my oil, is I, I want to bring in more vibrancy, which I can achieve with oil paint over acrylic. And I want to bring in thickness to that paint because it really helps that paint to stand out proud. And it really sort of provides a really interesting, um, a really interesting contrast uh, in the painting. And I feel like contrast is really important. And contrast doesn't only get achieved through lights and darks, but it can also be achieved through the type of paint and how thick that paint is being applied in my opinion. Alright, so um, 
now kind of working into these trees, um, bringing in a little more of my uh, my pinks. I wanted this tree to sort of be, this is sort of um, more of a late spring time. There's going to be more flowers. The trees are going to have some beautiful colors to them. And then I can also come back again uh, and work in with my oil paint, really, really highlighting and bringing out the flower beds, which is a, an important component to this painting. This painting is is an early evening um, in the flower garden. So the flowers are an important part uh, of the painting as well. And now I can just come back. This is refining. I'm bringing in just more color. I'm trying to create some brush stroke and some texture uh, just to to create a level of interest here and I want to sort of highlight more the contrast between the lights and the darks now and, and I think um, you know that's something that I really enjoy in the paintings uh, really showing the light painting the light um, is something that I really enjoy and that's where I can really achieve that much better with oil paint than I can with acrylic paint. So this whole this whole painting really gets covered in oils, but um, you can you can conquer 90% of the battle just by first applying everything in acrylic paint. Um, so that's really the reason why I, I go back and do that. And this painting is nearly complete. Um, it, was a, it was a fun project. I hope that uh, this has been helpful for you uh, on how I like to go about putting a painting such as this together. A lot of planning goes into it, a lot of time um, using small brushes, a lot of patience, but in the end uh, you can really create some really neat, fun uh, paintings um, with this particular technique that, that I enjoy using, so give it a try. Thanks for tuning in and please subscribe and uh, until next time.